<laughs> Hello, everybody. I guess it's sort of nice to see you all. We'll see. Uh, again, um, for someone who's new, I, maybe Virginia hasn't been here before. So Virginia, these talks are sort of under the banner of non-duality, but you can never talk about non-duality. You can talk about duality. So basically, uh, non-duality, uh, a teacher of non-duality is an inviter concerning the topic of duality. Maybe, just maybe, when you see uh, what you're not, you'll find out what you are. So there doesn't need to be any prior knowledge. Uh, there's an echo there, Mike. Oops. You got it? Oh, that might be me. All right. No, it's good there. So this prior knowledge of non-duality in a weird way doesn't, it doesn't serve us in a sense. I think what serves us is to hear about what we're not and then warnings how what you're not will keep, keep uh, taking seemingly the place of you. Yeah. And so it's very quickly the, uh, you know, the lion can see that it's in sheep clothing and yet in a second the sheep programming takes over again. So uh, it's not enough to know it in a weird way. There's got to be a seeing of it, which is another form of knowing, but not an intellectual one, but a seeing of it. So then non-duality is just not to, it means not to. Yeah, so what is to? I mean, if, if the, the, uh, the emphasis of non-duality as a very, uh, very, very clear uh, mechanism, then you would want to see if it's just a negation of something that it would be important to see duality. If it's not two, then uh, it doesn't mean you start trying to understand or study the one, you study the two. Yeah, and then you'll find out about non-duality. So the duality obviously is uh, the format we're living in you know, seemingly here. There's a subject objectness because the subject of my life, Paul, is pictured as an object by most of, the, most of the mental processes. So it's strange. So when I feel like I was, I was in Hawaii, my memory pictures me as a body in Hawaii. So the me, the subject that was seeing all those beautiful flowers and catching the waves and doing this and doing that, the subject that was experiencing life is held as an object in the mental processes. So we're thought about. Only an object could be thought about in a weird way, yeah? The memories see us as a body. The perception sees things. And then the thoughts are assuming that we're a subject, but the subjectness is pictured as an object. So this is the negation of non-duality. So, of course, when I came to non-duality, I had been through a couple of other things, and I was keen on knowing non-duality. I didn't realize the real direction is to see what you're not, until I did. You know, it was quick that I started to recognize something was off at the meetings I was going to, because even in the meetings of non-duality, there was a duality there. The one person sitting on the stage seemed to have something that the other people didn't have, yeah? And it was a very subtle us and them, uh, speaking about there is no us or no them. So some, a guy spoke to me yesterday, and he was telling me how in certain meetings he used to go to, the person who's giving the meeting says, well, this isn't therapy. And then it turns into therapy for the next hour or two. Yeah, it's like a trip. It's a trip. So the idea of, uh, of trying to understand and move towards non-duality was quickly uh, corrected 
as soon as I got involved in non-duality, if you want to call it whatever, the topic of it. And then the direction was set, I feel, in an appropriate way where I started looking at what I wasn't because I felt, you know, the construction or the reinforcement or the implying of being the subject object was so fast in the system that I was relying on, it may be a second or a second and a half. And in, in a short amount of time, I could see the process, that process couldn't be beat by other processes. You couldn't get before that process. So I saw as soon as there was meditation done, there was the sense of being the meditator so fast. And at that point, the meditation is used to imply the meditator. How am I going to meditate myself out of that? All the meditation is being used to reinforce the meditator. And it's like the Ramana said in that, uh, the presupposing of a non-existent thing, wanting to get salvation for the non-existent thing. And says, if that's the case, your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? So in a way, in this example, if the meditation, the act of meditating is being claimed by the mental process and is being crowned as something the meditator is doing, yeah, then all the meditation will, can be, I'm not saying it will be, but all the meditation from that point on can be used to reinforce the meditator, which is the bondage of self, yeah? And I don't see anything, so you can't do yourself out of the doer, yeah? Because whatever you do, the mental process is going to use it very quickly to imply the doer of it. So you're not going to do yourself out of the doer. Yeah, you're not going to think yourself out of the thinker. You're not going to meditate yourself out of the meditator. So what's one to do? Maybe see the act of how the mental state claims what's happening to imply there's a someone it's happening to or, or is happening through. Yeah, maybe that was the key when I started to see the mechanism that produces this sense of subject object, objectness called Paul, the duality that non-duality is negating, yeah? Something in that statement of non-duality negating duality, there's an activity constantly reinforcing duality, yeah? And that, that activities that are reinforcing duality right here, if that activity claims to be the hero of non-duality, it dualistically frames it, yeah? It just kills it, it neuters it immediately because it doesn't fit itself around the non-duality, it fits non-duality around itself. So the activity of duality, if it rises and claims to be the hero of the message, it neuters the message. And it's not a personal thing, it's a mechanical thing. We're not looking at, oh, my car is, is driving terribly as if it's fucking doing it to me. No, the car is driving bad, yeah, basically. There's a mechanical hiccup in the car that doesn't allow it to be the vehicle we would like to see it to be to arrive at where we already are. It can only drive us away. Even when it's saying it's driving us closer to it, it's driving us away, yeah? Because it's exactly what non-duality is negating, not two. So the two-ness is attempting to understand the oneness, and more, all it does is make oneness a dualistic thing of two-ness. So now you can only entertain oneness in relationship to two-ness. That's again the duality. So it was, I came quickly to realize, man, I can't get out of this. It's impossible. What a freaking wonderful relief. Yeah. <laughs> I can't use myself to find myself. I can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. I can't use mind, big mind, not mental process, mind, to seek mind. I can't use light to seek light. 
if I do, it, you can try it for eons and nothing's going to happen. Yeah? I mean, for me, that's sort of like you're traveling, unbeknownst to you, as Tunis, you run into that stop and hopefully the thing pauses the vehicle and then maybe, just maybe, you abandon the vehicle. Yeah? So you don't pull back and then try another way to get to it and then get stopped there and then pull back in another way. There's an abandonment of the vehicle. You realize I'm not going to get it. You realize I'm not going to further the understanding of it. You realize in a weird way, as soon as there's an identification as the two-ness, you're actually playing the role of the obscuring agent. Yeah. You actually are playing the role of the obscuring agent. And, and usually, the more interested in the, the topic as from duality, the more obscuring you have the ability to do. It's incredible. The more interest I put into it, the more I'm, it, the, the, there's just so much more obscuring. And so watching and observing the effects of entertaining these ideas, what I saw, it was just a losing of interest. Yeah, a comp- a lot of loss of interest. First, I could see I lost complete interest in the need to be liberated completely because I realized I'm not that which needs to be liberated. I'm not. Yeah. I gave, I gave completely lost interest in phenomenal fucking super high peak experiences because I saw fundamentally they don't do anything. Yeah. Fundamentally, it's like a ball that bounces off the cement but always goes back to the cement i can't bounce my ball out of here it always goes back and hits the thing so what i'm gonna hit it harder and harder i can't get the trajectory to break through the gravity of the system as the system yeah i don't matter how hard i hit the ball i put a jet engine on the ball it's still gonna sooner or later come back So there are so many comings and goings, some seem a lot longer. So you go, I went, I went, I went, but then then you're back again. Yeah. And it's so frustrating for the system because the system doesn't understand that it can't escape from the system because the part that wants to escape from the system doesn't see itself as the system. It doesn't. We have a perfect catch-all in recovery. Self can't get out of self. The confusion is the first, the self that's trying to get out of the the recognized self is called Paul or Richard or Mary. Yeah? So it it will study self can't get out of self, self can't get out of self, but it will be doing exactly what that statement is pointing out. But it doesn't see it because it goes, no, I beg to differ, differ with you. I saw self. Yeah? Paul saw self, and now Paul is trying to get out of self. Yeah? Jim saw it super clear. Now Jim's trying to vacate the premise. But Jim and Paul are self. Yeah? They're an appearance of the duality. So the duality recognizes it sees like a reflection of itself, but by the seeing of it, it's mutated. You don't see it as you. You don't apply it to you. You apply it to, oh, I've seen the self. Yeah. Now I'm going to become free from it. But we don't see that that self. So someone comes over here today and they tell me earnestly their, their voyage to, to leave self to extinguish self, to kill self. All the while, they don't know if they're in the act of being identified as self. So if they could just get a hit of that, then you present this little thing, hey, bro, self can't get out of self. Then while they're out of self, they can see it. Yeah, they have a hit. Oh, yeah, oh, that's what's been going on. Does it, is it like a, a clarion call to action? No, it's a disarming. You recognize the futility of using what you're not to get out of what you're not, yeah, <laughs> basically. And then there's a recognition, you have never been in the, the, the thing of what you're not, yeah? 
You've never been what you're not. It's not like, oh, I was what you're not, then I finally woke up, and now I am what I really am. No, you've never been what you're not. It's an activity what you are is engaged in, yeah? What's given the feeling of really being a sheep is the lion, not the sheep. The sheep is like a suit, yeah? It doesn't have any, you know, pulsating sheepness. It's the suit is used for the lion in a way to convince itself it's a lion, a sheep. So now it's the lion that gives the sheep all the meaning it has. It's not the sheep giving a meaning to the lion. The sheep's a suit, yeah? It's an idea. So hopefully, you know, the invitation was, is just that. Try to sort of put the horse in front of the cart and give warnings about how the horse, the cart will be placed in front of the horse. Just so that hopefully you'll see it, yeah? And that's all that's necessary. You don't have to teach what happens after you see that. You don't, yeah? You have to teach the warnings that's, our, that's attempting to keep that at bay or to own it or claim it so quickly you never get the real deal, yeah? That's all. When, when you see all the activities of what you're not, there's no need for anything else because you'll find out what you are and you will come to the conclusion, sense felt, that you are what you've been looking for, seriously and that the looking was the blindness to it, seriously. All these little cryptic statements will be totally, completely, authentically reverberating in your life, yeah? To the point where there's no movement anymore. You're convinced freaking completely, yeah? And all the mental movements aren't from you. They're not your dance. You just see it, see it, see it, see it, and there's more loss of interest. And basically, now while you're seeing it, you're just looking into the space around it because you know it's going to end, yeah? You know it's, gonna con- it's not going to compel an action. You know it ha- it's feeble and powerless, yeah? Yeah. And now you just have a basic uh, starting point and reliability of being awake to being awake. It's, it's, not a, you know, it's not like, a, oh, you know, you've gone through the 12 tests of Hercules. There's no 12 tests of Hercules. There's no Hercules, yeah? It's just a, a traveling lighter as what you're not, which what you're not could never produce. It can't produce it, yeah? It's trying to produce it is the heaviness. So things get finally put to rest and they're lined up and when they're lined up it was never not that way you know it was always lined up this was just an imagining a seemingly so it's been appearing to be true but it never reached a so-ness or a trueness or a reality it hasn't nor will it ever yeah you are what you are and really that's that so All right. Anybody want to raise their hands for comment or question time? Judith is waving, so I think that means. See, I think she wants to ask a question. <laughs> All right, unmute her, Mike. Yeah. yeah, it says now for me, ask to unmute. Okay, and then they... okay. am I unmuted? Yeah. Yep. Paul, I am so glad that I'll never have to say I'm Paul Heatherman's devotee because, <laughs> I mean, who am I and who are you? Here we are. That would be such a disservice to me and to all of us. I am... Oh, what you just talked about was 
mind blowing. Thank you. Oh, it's even hard to say thank you. I love you. It's hard to, <laughs> that doesn't happen. There is no Paul. And I can tell you ways to say thank you, honey. Tell me one. I'll send you a list. I have a few. Okay. Of them. Thank well, Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the grateful. Is to watch your face light up, honey. That's all. Yeah, it's you know what the joy is is when the the marathon runner in the closet opens the door a little bit, and peeks out, and a new possibility becomes available. Yes, yeah, that's worth. That's like the greatest joy. Oh. Ever since I was watching it, being in a position of sitting in front of people and. Uh, first you thought, you know, oh, once the light went on, that was it, but it's not the case. When the light goes on, the mental state really uh, surrounds it in a sense, and it immediately claims that light. And therefore, you have to become like an ear doctor. You have to see how people hear the message, yeah? And you have to keep repeating the same invitation so that one of those times and the head will say, oh, I've heard this thousands of times, but the hearing of it is only really needed once. Yeah. Right. right. All it needs to take is once to get in there. And then, you know, maybe it takes a few more times, but after a while there's a groove and it's easily triggered. Yes. And then that which tries to surround it is seen not from the surrounding point of view, but from the light, yeah? Right. Now you have, uh, you found stability in a weird way. You found reliability. Absolutely. It's not based on your mental condition. It isn't. That's the great news. Yeah. Because sometimes people feel very sincere and con totally convinced, and then a half hour later, they're not. You can't base anything on that because it's a dualistic, and both floors aren't this, they're not even on the same line. Yeah, they're constantly moving. Yeah, there's no rest there. There's no peace there. Two-ness can't come to rest. Mm -hmm. It can't, because it's an agitated thing. Like in a, there was a great statement in Faith Mind, a Zen old, a, an old Zen treatise, which was, and one of the translations, it says, you know, you can't use activity to produce stillness. That would be activity. Well, two-ness is really an activity, isn't it? Because all there is is this, and then two-ness would be a movement, yeah? Right. So that two-ness, that that's an activity. You can't use this activity to arrive at peace. It's just activity, more activity, you see? Correct, correct. Yeah. I had a small visitor. Well, it lasted just a second. Oh, um, it was an old idea that I just want to be good. And I caught it. Because who wants to be good? And yeah. But that's it. That's, that's the whole point, honey. More gets revealed. So it's not about seeing what you are. It's seeing what you're not. Right. And there's right. a sense of what you are. There's no way you can see what you are because you are that. Yeah. But you can definitely see what you're not and get sort of clear, like what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful for that because that is traveling easier. And it gives me, oh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. That's going to be it. I finally reached, ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I, uh, I'll, oh. I'll, 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 I'll
guess I'll just find myself here. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Paul, Paul, yeah. I dream about you, you know. Last oh, night I yeah. dreamt of Paul Heatherman and I was talking about how oh, why do my relationships feel so funny? And you said to me in the dream, honey, oh, and gave me a little brush, a painter's brush that had very, very small brushes. And you said, just why don't you give it a dusting? It, it'll fall apart. It can't hold the weight of uh, this brush. And I was so happy about that. <laughs> oh, good, good. Uh- just, I've just, been dreaming Paul Hadman for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, really. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't recommend anybody dreaming this action figure either. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> Big question mark. That's <laughs> right. It's fine. <laughs> Mahalo, Paul. Ah, uh, Mahala, yes. We'll go. We'll be over in Hawaii sooner or later. Uh, you'll have to come and stay in my house. Yeah, we'll go to Maui and we'll come visit you and stuff. Hopefully. Wonderful. Amelia really loves Maui, so. Yeah, Aloha, Amelia. Thanks for taking care of our wonderful. You've got better things to do than listening to the talk. <laughs> yeah, she's doing her hair now. Oh, that's good. (laughs) (laughs) The lion is trying to straighten up her sheep hair. (laughs) uh, Yeah, she's, she's, uh, whatever. (laughs) I'll I'll pass on the next. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Have a wonderful day. Thanks, honey. I am right now. Whatever that is. (laughs) It's nice to see everyone. It's really nice to see Richard and not put him through having to pick me up at the airport. That's a, I know that's a heavy toll on you, Rich. So this is, we finally found a way to cut out that out, eh? It's pretty good. See, that's the beauty of this place. You run into situations and you think, how is this going to work out? And now it's worked out. One time, Richard, we flew into London and Richard uh, picked me up at the airport and then he couldn't find where his car was. And uh, we were in the wrong car, car uh, garage. He missed it by a mile. It was in the wrong garage. So <laughs> it took a couple of hours. Then they finally got the car and we were waiting and we could see them missed a little turn to pick us up like twice. <laughs> so we saved a lot of people a lot of trouble. The Zoom. Thank you, Zoom. <laughs> and the funny thing is driving in Richard's car the last word you could ever use for that experience is zoom <laughs> <laughs> so you see it's worked out it's the trip eh? see the joy of it as an action figure is to observe something like a divine choreographer working, you know, that's part of the joy of seeing, you know, oh yeah, how can I limit my trips, you know, to the airports when I'm in London? Well, not go to London. (laughs) That's a cool, that's cool. All right, Mike, anyone else though? I don't see any hands. Oh, there's one. Let's not talk too loud. Mike is out cold, sleeping. I like seeing that. Not this Mike. No, Mike Servasi, uh, whatever. Mike's He's out cold. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, was... Nick raised his hand. Who? Nick Moore. It's me. Oh, Nick Moore. Hello, Hello Paul. Oh, Nick. Yes, it's our new friend, Nick. Hi, Nick. It's the first time I've spoken to you, Paul. I've been here a few uh, weeks. Oh, there you are. Hey, Nick. How are you? Hi, doing good. Been listening, uh, been joining in for a few weeks, listening and uh, watch the YouTubes. I think each time, each time I hear it, I think, oh, I've got it. And then next time I hear it, I get something else and it, something comes in. Yeah. 
And I think uh, what you say about traveling lighter, it really works because you don't have to like try and solve everything. You just, just like you say, you just have to see, see what you're not and what, and you, you can just take a step back. And it, I find like if I'm in a calm situation, like at home, I can sort of go, okay, I see it. And of course, then life comes along, something happens, some situation, something a bit stressful maybe. And then sometimes you'll, I'll just forget about it and I'll just get into the, the hurly burly of the situation. Other times I can, I can take, a, take a moment and go, oh, hang on, let's just look at this. And, and it makes it, makes it easier and things sort of flow. Uh, I don't know if there's any, I don't know, trick, but like, how, how, to, how, to, how to not forget to see what you're not? Uh, well, the, by realizing you don't need to remember either. <laughs> <laughs> No, literally. I mean, those forays of going in and out hasn't changed. Uh, <laughs> it's like going out in and out of a, the same room. Yeah, we've we've imagined a door and then a wall, and then we're going in and out. But it's if you look far above, it's you haven't left anywhere. <laughs> the yeah. in and out is the same room. <laughs> it's always there. Well, yeah, so you have, you know, some things draw your attention in more than other things. Like, you know, fucking a loud sound at night, you become attentive to. Other times, you know, you're used to like the frogs going off when the sun goes down. So you may not even pay attention to that anymore. But the fact that uh, you paying attention or not attention doesn't mean you're closer or farther away. You're the whole space, bro. You know, this is just a 80 year, 90 year little mental hiccup, you know, or like a mental TikTok. But it says, yeah, I mean, don't, uh, the assurance is the futility of really looking for what you are with what you are, really. That's the futility. The real relief is that it isn't about getting out of every situation and being the witness of all. It's just traveling lighter is the, is the, the working modality of the message when it's entertained, yeah? And the, that which is traveling lighter obviously is appreciative because it couldn't come to traveling lighter on its own, basically, yeah? It's just a crazy dysfunctional mechanism. So, all right, so now it, it sees that something is done for it that it couldn't do for itself. So there's humility in a way, yeah? So now there's a humility and then it starts, uh, you know, then basically, yeah, oh, it got lost in a thought and came back. Who cares really, you know what I mean? Ultimately, really. And so if you wanna, if you wanna have it where, uh, you know, there's methodologies that you can ha seem to have the clarity in the minuscule finiteness of a moment, but you're missing the whole fucking panoramic. Yes. I don't want that. So, yeah. 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 So it's just an assurance that all the comings and goings has never left where they all arose from and departed to basically. Yeah. There's something about it that uh, allows your, allows what to, what's happening to be happening, like in an accepting way, yeah? Yeah, because it knows it's, it doesn't, all the splashing doesn't really move any water, yeah? It's just, yes, it's just splashing and shit like that, but no water's lost or anything like that, yeah? So, yeah, it's like moving a perspective around in the same room. No, yeah, yeah. So, so now you get the sense of space. And then in that sense of, of space, the movement of the mental activity of claiming and everything is held in a whole different way than if you're trying to get clear, become a witness of the mental craziness, you know, it's just much more, uh, you know what, so what, you know.
Like Judith said, what, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You know, whatever, you know, you just yeah. like someone was going give me an interview yesterday and go, well, what does nothing mean? Who cares? I don't care what nothing means. You know, really, I don't. <laughs> just like, you know, I've, uh, I mean, what did I really ever want as an action figure? Really to not be in my own way so much, you know, to be able to receive and give love, to be able to be uh, here without fucking a lot of effort, you know, to just to be okay without having to be okay, yeah? But just to be okay. And all of these things have come to pass as a traveling, you know, as a, as a traveling programmed mechanism. What more do I want, yeah? Yeah. If I want uh, enlightenment and shit like that, it's not, that's not on my, that's not on my, that's not my pay scale. Yeah. I am that which I'm looking for. Yeah. So when you see that, then the looking for gets minimized, you know, and it's not taken to be that important anymore because you realize you are what you've been looking for. <laughs> you know what I mean? The looking for it is the blindness to it. So you really, you lose interest in a lot of stuff and you're just, uh, but you never get gypped. You're here completely. Yeah. Uh, nothing is really remembered much. It comes and goes. Everything doesn't have a quality. Like it's sort of like uh, n realizing all the pictures are moving pictures. Why do I want to buy a lot of gold frames? You know? Yeah, well, I think a poor memory. Not anything, it's just like going. It. Yeah. Why do I want to have gold frames and shit? Just, just, yeah? Yeah. It's going to be all forgotten I anyway. You, I hear you, man. Yeah. Cool. So it's just, uh, so yes, uh, well, I seem to have lost myself. Yeah, but that's all in what can't be lost. So does it really, you know, yeah, when I thought I could it's lose like, it? Uh, it's, it's like, it seems a shame to get into a situation that maybe if I hadn't lost myself, maybe I might have been able to sort of <laughs> be more cool about it. It doesn't matter, it doesn't that's matter. That's what had to happen. There had to have, there had to have a seeming losing of yourself for that to come to pass. You're not, it's not about us. It's a whole little collage. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's much better when one of the colors doesn't think it should have been a different color. Yeah. Oh, I should have been blue. And then the picture would have been different. Yeah. But that's the, how the picture was meant to come. Yeah. You played your role perfectly. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's That's like, great. Uh, That's great. yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Really, when I have a, when I have a, a, a you know, a, a, a meeting with a B, which is more, who's more important, you know? I mean, the B could be, at that moment, could be much more important than Paul. You know, <laughs> I, I, I thought of you. The other day, I was walking along through some woods, and there was a little bird, and it just threw down, it landed on a little branch, just a few feet ahead. And as I, I was looking at, it, as I walked up, it like flew flew away to another branch. And I think I remembered something you'd said about seeing things as an invitation. Yeah. And I like, and I just, and I, and I saw that uh, that bird, and I just thought that was just an invitation, just to to be to be here with this bird. It wasn't. It was just cool. I, I just, it, I was, I've started yeah. to see things in a, in a bit more of that open way of just like, oh, there's that thing. There's that thing. And like, yeah, and see, it like lends that. itself to that you're available. Yeah. Available, yeah. Yeah, so a and bird comes, um, yeah. and it, the bird wants four seconds of your attention. You're available for that. Yeah, and something else. There's an availability. Yeah, because yeah. there was definitely a time when. I would have been thinking of some thoughts. Of course, and, of course. So that's the traveling lighter, right? It's just you're yes. not having those. The traveling lighter, <laughs> you don't come, you go, out, you go out on a long trip and you don't come home with anything. Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, the, the whole tripping was more than enough. 
Yeah. I hear. Ya. Yeah. So Thank you just. You. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Nick. Okay. I'm going to keep calling you Nick more or less. Yeah. That's fine. I yeah. used to get called at school uh, Nick, uh, Nick Moore, the kleptomaniac. More or less, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had other nicknames too, but we'll save them for another day. <laughs> All right, Nick. I'll see you soon, I hope. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else here? Anybody else? Want to raise your hand or a wave? I'm just going to say hello to everyone then. Imad, nice to see you. Alan, very nice. Kate has an interesting picture. There she is. Andre. Micah, Rob, Chris, Chris Gilmore is up to something. I know that. I can see it in his face. Sarah, Luca, let's see who else is here. We got uh, I Am Now. I Am Now is chowing down. He's got a, it's like a trough. Yeah, it's a large bowl you got there. Something. We got Keith, my friend from the Northlands, Art, Dimitri, Sue, Andre, Sky, uh, David K. C. I don't want to give you last name. Julie, you know who you are. Mike's iPod. Let's see who's back here. We got Sarah. Sarah and uh, Elena look like they're in uh, intensive care. Elena has progressed into having a pillow. That's good, Elena. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> we got Kate P. Kate P's got the braids on. I'm getting ready to do that, the hair. I get, trying to get a haircut this week. Uh, Lee, Lee's been on sabbatical. He's come back. All right, Lee, don't tell me what you've been doing, please. Arash. Glenda, I think it's Ilan, eh? I-L-A-N, Ilan, nice to see you. Christopher, Nick more or less, Norman. Norman is uh, in his recording studio. Natalie, nice to see you, Natalie, up there. We got, uh, who's this here? Chris, Sylvester, Sean Gilsaman. I think, do you mind? I just said your last name, I'm sorry. AV is AV, AKA Virginia. We got Ben Clark. Ben Clark's been up for two days now. That's amazing. I mean, up, sitting up, not up, up. <laughs> Donna, Donna, your friend has Bob. left. Yes. It's, um, I talked to Sailor Bob and Kat today. We hadn't talked for a while. We just catch up. They're friends of mine. And they said uh, down in Australia, they said to say hello. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we were just they, there in February. Yeah, they said they really enjoyed your visit. Well, good. Yeah, I, we did too. Thanks, D. See you soon, honey. Hey, Ashley. Yes, again. Barbara and Roman. Vlad. Chris. Chris. Clo. Uh, he's on. He's riding a horse or something. He's something. We got Mike Z. Judith. Richard, he could be in a car or not, I can't tell. Jess Lockhart, Johans, Yariv, Yariv, Mike is Johan out has cold. His, Johan Mike has out cold, up. sleeping oh. really well. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You missed uh, Johan's hand when you went over his Oh, Johan, let's go. Hi, Paul. Hey, Johan. Nice um, I, uh, the comes question up. Um, what's about dedication? And the question is, you have dedication to see the truth. Um, I am struggling there a little bit because um, 
who is it who have dedication or who is it who have um, to, to see the truth? Because the mind misleads always and um, you cannot find the truth by the mind. So, um, and uh, I'm not quite sure um, how to, to um, from what point is the truth seen? Well, the truth is relative in a lot of ways. So the truth of non-duality is that it's not real. I mean, duality is that it's not real, yes? Yeah. So the truth is in seeing what's false. And so when someone says, uh, if that which is false is stating that it's dedicated to the truth, that would sort of uh, bogus the truth in a sense, yes? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, for me, a dedication to the, to the truth is uh, a recognition of what's going on and then the appropriate response, which is being chilled out, so to speak, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, but let's say if I'm speaking from a false reference and I believe I'm dedicated to the truth, is that going to really go anywhere? Not really. No, it's going to re the dedication to the truth is going to re is going to reinforce the false. Yes. Yeah. That's what so happens. That in dualistic movements. Yeah. A dedication to the truth may be reinforcing the false. So. Yeah, I read Nisargadatta Maharaj last couple of weeks or so. I start to reread him again, and he talking about about earnestness and everything. And I thought, okay, earnestness by the mind brings me nowhere because I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking from the wrong, uh, wrong point. So, and there are. There is um, the question who's looking. Well, and you say um, you are already that what you're looking for, so it's clear, but um, I couldn't see it or it's, it's not seen at the moment. But you see the importance of asking who's looking because that the movement of looking isn't in the fact of you are what you're looking for. Oh. You see? Yeah. The truth would be more important about uh, recognizing you're not that which is uh, looking for, yeah? Because obviously, if the looking for had the ability to get the message uh, that you are what you're looking for, it would stop, yeah? Yeah, but it doesn't in a way. It just makes it just, if you take away the uh, the obvious ones, it gets a subtle one, yeah? It just keeps on looking, keeps on looking. Just recognize you're not that which is looking, yeah? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because okay. what happens is you say you are what you're looking for, but what hears that or claims to be the hearer of that is that which is looking. That's why it doesn't yeah. go anywhere. It just, fuck, it just confuses the... Uh, it's like, uh, you know, saying like a mathematical problem to a dog, you know, the dog like just can't understand it. So the programming of, <laughs> of that's driving the what's looking, you know, I mean, the looking for doesn't get really doesn't get uh, <laughs> that it is what's looking. It, it's, it would sizzle the, the wiring, so to speak, you know. <laughs> That's not usually brought about by what's looking. It sort of intervenes on it. Something intervenes on it. Just like in my experience with uh, recovery from alcohol and drugs. I sort of got struck. And there's a, I got struck sober, so to speak. So there's a statement in the big book that uh, you must concede to your innermost self. Yeah? yeah. Now, that didn't, that's not how it went with me something conceded to my innermost self. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, something bypassed the me and conceded to the, my innermost self that I'm fucked. I mean, the thing that I was, that was driving me to look and fucking get loaded everything, knew that already. It didn't, it just never wanted to deal with it, yeah? So it was avoiding it at all costs. So something other than me conceded to the innermost self, yeah? <clears throat> or the innermost, let's say. And that's been the way everything's happened in this experience, yeah? <laughs> it's not like uh, the painting has applied its own additions of colors, yeah? The, 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 the added colors bled through the previous painting from the back, yeah? Oh. The painting never got the right colors to add on to the painting. It bled through. Yeah. So. My feeling yeah. about you, Johans, is a little bit, is sometimes earnest, earnestness in, a, in the West becomes a sort of a psychotic thing. It's not, it's not yeah. observance, yeah? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. His framing of earnestness was from a different culture. People in the West, they go, they go fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. we fall into a, we miss the forest from the trees. We're so pointed at the tree, we don't get the whole picture. So earnestness, yeah, yeah is great, but you got to see what, who or what is giving the meaning to the earnestness. A lot of earnestness will be, a, will be used almost as a disservice or as an obscuring, really. Yeah, so okay. it's, yeah, when you read, you know, yeah. Yeah. Being one who wasn't, didn't take much seriously this life, <clears throat> the only thing I ever really took seriously was spirituality, and I saw how that worked. <laughs> that didn't work too well in my, uh, in my observation. So, <laughs> you know what happened? When I got introduced to spirituality, it was an Indian guru when I was 20, 19, 20, yeah? I had never had any experience with anything like that. I grew up a Catholic, you know, a loose one in New York. Uh, <laughs> so I got introduced to this spiritual uh, practice, meditation. And suddenly I had thousands of, of, of ideas about the topic I had no experience of. Yeah. It was sort of like I had so many fucking ideas about what I should or shouldn't be like, you know, what, what, when am I gonna really be a meditator, the guru, ton, where did they come from? They were just potently, latently there, and as soon as the fucking programming of the action figure meant, meant this topic called spirituality, I didn't know that that had a lot of meaning to the programming of the action figure. It poured out so much meaning. It was, I couldn't leave the guru because it was worse than any relationship I ever had with any girl. Because the guru was presented as the Lord of the universe and I wanted to leave the Lord of the universe. It made me feel terrible. And I wanted to leave, you know, it was just, I, it was like eight more assholes drilled into me with that, so. <laughs> It was much better to fucking lose interest in all that. And, uh, and you know, no moss the approach and get redone, you know, get, get the head turned around somehow and then see it in a different way, yeah? Which has brought about an ease and comfort, not a conflict and tension. It's brought about an acceptance, not sacrifice. Definitely not sacrifice and martyrdom. None of that, yeah? It's done about the whole, it's, it's the effects and how they happen were completely different than what I was looking for and what I was doing. Yeah, completely. Yet, I can't argue with the, with the sense of it, yeah? Can't argue with it. <clears throat> it's reliable. 
it's led me to having, you know, reaching a point here. Um, this is the last answer. There's no, I've been open to new answers. I haven't gotten any in years. Yeah. Basically, it cleared up every, all the confusion I had about a very important topic, which was spirituality. And I had tons of confusion completely, not knowing that I was the confusing factor. And all of that shit got cleared up. You know? With, and you would think if that shit was real, it would have taken a lot of work to fucking clear that whole shit up. It just none. It had no work at all. <clears throat> None. Didn't, and I never had a demand ever, in a way. All right. Test number 45. No, I've never had been tested. You know, we have a thing in AA. Uh, you have to be willing to go to any lengths, but very rarely do you get called to go to any lengths. That's what this message has been like. <clears throat> it didn't even say this, you know, you've got to be willing to go to any lengths. You don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. So... You're not going to make it fit the brain the way the brain is. You're going to have to see the brain, you know, like they used to say, what is it? You're, I don't like the word ego, but in recovery, you say your ego is not, not your amigo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's seen that I could not escape an illusion, but um, I try it again and again. So. I know. I think you should. Uh, when this gets better, the pandemic or something, go out and dance or something, yeah? Okay, that's right. Yeah, eat some raw almond butter cheesecake or shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What your hands wouldn't do, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> We have Barbara. And okay. Barbara and Roman. Oh uh, yeah. Just wanted to say I'm not Barbara. Definitely. <laughs> You're not so, Barbara. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm not Barbara. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to thank you today. That was uh, quite some speech. Um, I'm still spinning inside. My head is spinning still. Because uh, what, what you said about the quickness of how, of how quick this, uh, yeah, this sense comes in to be, to be this. Um, today, somehow, I saw it. I heard it a hundred thousand times, but it never stuck. stuck. I never could see. And today it was, I, I noticed that I cannot have any experience without Romaning coming in with it. Basically, whatever comes up, whatever, my, as soon as attention comes in, there's Romaning with it. And I cannot do anything about that. It is simply so, yeah. so pre, it is so presupposed. And, and now, it's, it's since then, I finally, every 10 seconds, I fall out of there. And then I come in as Romaning again, and I fall out, and that makes me completely dizzy at the moment. So... Uh, there is the possibility of experience a stabilized version of, of that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's uh, it will just that there'll be uh, the the in and out will, won't be as interesting. Oh, you fall out of the in and out. Also, yeah, the in and out won't be that interesting, and then <clears throat> the out that was never in will be more obvious. Yeah. But there will be the movement in and out for sure. <clears throat> yeah, but there'll be the the. It's like the the balance of power will shift, so to speak, sort of like from content to context. Yeah. 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 At the moment, it stands out as an experience, of course, because mm -hmm. it's at the moment it stands out as an experience, and therefore it's interesting. But uh, that that will <clears throat> remain. Then. In a way. Yeah, so like the in and out, you know, if you're an addict for the out, then the in has to be real. So then you get stuck in this little, yeah. 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 For you to get the joy of being out, you have to have really been in. Yeah, <laughs> it's a trippy thing. You lose interest in that, like tipping those scales. Yeah. yeah so I'm a du duality addict. <laughs> 
basically. Yes, you lose interest in it. Uh, that doesn't mean you lose interest, but you lose interest in it, in that movement, yeah. So the movement keeps it. That's how things appear here to the programming. In and out, yes and no, close and far. That's the binary dualistic system. You're not going to become the all eternal oneness and appear as a two-ness. Yeah, it's not going to, you know what I mean? It's not going to, there's going to be the appearance of two-ness here. Yeah, but you're going to see it from, I, want, I don't like oneness, but you'll see it from somewhat, a larger view, so to speak. Yeah, so the two-ness won't be able to, uh, push out the context, yeah? You'll see the two-ness within a bigger field. Yeah. So all, all the investment in this, this swing. Well, yeah, you lose interest, investment, interest, yeah. Yeah, all of that. And then the interest goes into something that's truly reliable. So you don't have to go to the stock markets all day to see how your stock's doing. It's truly reliable, and then that It gives you the ability to enjoy peace and shit like that and serenity because uh, you're not a, a certain engine has been turned off in a way. It's not idling or ready to go into first gear. It's just been turned off as sort of in a way as an image. Yeah. Yeah, I have faith in this message, you know, because. Uh, You know, I've been watching it in my own experiment. Yeah, I've watched it over the years. Not like, you know, fucking, you know, a loose watching. And I've observed changes I could never have imagined. You know, if you would, I would have, uh, every, all of my plans would have just reinforced the planner. Yeah, but something actually has changed the whole system which is pretty cool. And I know it's not from the system, that's for sure. Yeah. So, good. It's good to see you, Roman. Stick with us. Yeah. Yeah, I will hang out with you. It's fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, bro. Good to see you. Hey, Roman. Thanks. Um, Imad has a question. Hi, Paul. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Paul, question. I'm new to this. So, like, you... The effort by the action figure, which I'm not sure what it means, so that doesn't get you uh, anywhere. But is it sometimes a good idea just to see the quality of it, or even though it may make things take a lot longer versus seeing what you're not? I miss I, a couple of your words dropped out there. So if you could repeat that a little. The effort. Yeah. Which, according to you, it doesn't work. I'm new at this, so I don't have the experience. So is the effort sometimes necessary to realize the futility of it? And yes, it can be. It? Yes, <clears throat> it can be. I don't, it's, see, nothing has to be, <clears throat> but it can be. Yeah. So when you say, yeah, when you say <clears throat> I had to do a lot of effort to realize the, the uh, futility of effort. Yes, that's true. But is it always that way? No, it doesn't have to go that way, but it does go that way. <laughs> so does the effort get you anywhere or is it not worth investing? Time exactly. It gets you somewhere. It gets you to the point to see that Uh, it's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah? So that got you somewhere. Just like it says, what can a failed system show you? It's failed. That's its success, yeah? Okay. And there's effort for things constantly. I'm not talking about effort. I'm talking about the idea, the effort being claimed to imply the efforter. Yeah, that's the dilemma. Yeah? Yes. 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 To watch the mechanism, so if there's effort, the mental state is claiming to be the one that's doing the effort, yeah? The effort is used to, used 
in the bondage, but it's not the point of bondage. The point of bondage is the efforter, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I effort all day. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's not like, uh, what is an action figure, but, yeah, action. So it's the idea that, it's like the, the thing when they used to say uh, non-doing. Non-doing is not doing nothing. It's doing without accompanied by the doer, yeah? So doing happens, but see, doing is the only thing that happens. The add-on is the doer. So non-doing is actions without an actor, yeah? Yeah, so... Also, efforting also may get you to a point where to help to see what you're not. It could. I don't know what it's going to do for you. I mean, I know yeah. what's before Emad is mind, and mind is dreaming through Emad, and mind can do whatever it wants through Emad to wake up from the dream the mind's entertaining, you know? So I can't say. But if you feel like you need to do something, do it. And if, you know, don't try to talk yourself out of it if there's a real feeling of need. If I felt I needed to do something, I would do it. Yeah? I mean, really, a real need. Like today, uh, my girlfriend and I, my girlfriend and I were going to get our haircuts. Yeah? We're in a sort of a, <clears throat> a slow down uh, world here in Northern California. So... I wanted to get a haircut for a while, my girlfriend. So a friend of mine, I called her, she, used to, she, she cuts my hair and she's doing them. And so she, she said, uh, you can come to the office today and get a haircut or the salon. And then I had a feeling, <clears throat> I don't think that's a good idea, you know, going into a little studio. So let's just put it off until we could, uh, get a haircut outside, you know, come over to the house and we have a big yard. Yes? I don't know what this has to do with anything, but so there was an effort there. I felt something. Yeah? So this is the point. Start following, <clears throat> you'll start getting a sense of your gut. Yeah? <clears throat> Not your head. Okay. Like, start uh, feeling <clears throat> the difference. <clears throat> I've got a little thing in my throat. There's a difference. <clears throat> See, you're on a relay, yeah, the action figure. Something, uh, some, uh, a message goes off and then the action figure gets it, yeah? The action figure has sentiments. It can cognize things. It can sort of get a sense of the different feeling when something's coming from the thought system and then something's coming from outside the thought system, yeah? And then just maybe okay. if in a, in a testing manner, you realize, oh, look at, what, look at how much shit happened when I followed my, those thoughts and look at how things worked out when I followed that other message, yeah? And so like a dog, you learn, hey, I think I'm gonna rely on the gut, yeah? I have the ability to recognize the difference in a lot of cases. I'm going to put my money on the gut now instead of putting my money because I began the whole thing with a lot of money on the, he the, the head, but I've come to realize it's a failed system. The action figure itself knows it's fucked by listening to this thing. So it, 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 it's more than happy to pick up a message from something else than the thought. And then you can recognize it, yeah? So... Effort can be helpful, and then it cannot be helpful. And you have the ability to see that sooner or later. You do. Yes, yeah. yes. So the gut, actually, I've experienced that. The gut feeling comes in, but the, the mind sabotages that sometimes, you know? Of course, it will try to sabotage. But, you know, the meaning that, you know, the, the amount of TNT, you know, dynamite, is based on your believing it to you, yeah? If it's not you, it's like a fucking, it's like, oh, they're, they're laying the, the dynamite, but there's no fucking gunpowder in the dynamite. You know, it's just like, it's all uh, street theater, so to speak. Yeah. It's when it's you, ah, then that's where the dynamite is laid. 
just see you're not that. That which is trying to sabotage you isn't you, yeah? So the gut is you, you would say? I mean, is that... It isn't you. On, a, on the cursory level, you want to see it as not you. On the ultimate level, it's you, obviously. But on this level, you see what you're not. You, you, what you're not isn't different than what you are, yeah? But it's not going to help you to keep saying that when what you're not is overbalanced with most of the interest and attention. It's not going to work out well. So let's see what you're not, yeah? Recognize it, so then the interest can move from there and go to another aspect of what you are, yeah? So that now suddenly, all the huffing and puffing of anxieties made out of what's not happening, no fires are ever lit anymore, yeah? You don't need a fire department. The alarms aren't going off every day. You see it as a lot of false alarming. Yeah, because the interest and attention has moved. Yeah, ultimately, yes, it's all us. Yeah, but relatively, in a weird way, as an activity, you can't go. See, if you're mingled in two-ness, you can't just proclaim your oneness. You have to see something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Well, let me say hello to everyone then. Sonny, wake up. Sukiyana, I got close. Pretty close. Sarah is up now. She was in uh, intensive care. Now she's... Oh, that's good. Good to see. Mike's iPad. Uh, what is this guy? That was Art. And there's Keith. I am now is still I am now. It's moved from solid to liquid. Yes. <laughs> Norman, how's it going? Good, good. Lee, it's very good. Uh, I'd like to see you uh, not asking a question. It's very good. Christopher, I, don't, I can't make you out, but uh, it looks like you have one of those uh, Himalayan salt lamps. Christopher, no? Yes. Yeah, I see it. Uh, let me see who else is here. Rob, nice to see you as always. Alan, I hope I meet you guys someday live. Be nice. Luca, Art. Nick Moore is asleep. Oh, that's good. David, David C., Julie's still there, George, uh, some numbers, Nancy, we got, uh, let me say hello to this, Sean, again, Chris is on the move, again, Barbara and Roman, Donna has left the couch, Glenda O'Driscoll, nice to see you, Glenda. Natalie, very nice to see you. Very nice to see Glenda. Vlad, somewhat nice to see Vlad. It's all right. Virginia, Ben Clark, Mike Z, Judith, Richard, fantastic Rich. Jess, Johans, Yariv, Mike is woken up. Nice to see you, Mike. We were worried. We got to call 911. We didn't see any movement. Yeah, I was uh, in a coma. Oh, you were in a coma. That's good. All right. Well, if we don't have any questions, let's uh, bid a fond farewell to the next Hi. time we meet. Hi. Yeah. Yes. I, I have uh, I have a quick question. All right. Um, when you when you clearly see that you're as you say that you're not the action figure, you know when you when you've clearly seen that and you've clearly seen that, 
Um, what, what, what do you do or what happens when, when the mind comes in and I mean, what do you, do you still have the mind that comes in sometimes that says this or that or whatever? And what do you do with that? I don't know. If I did have anything to, to do with it, I had forgotten already. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you don't have the mind that, you know, how the mind is just, I, I don't know if it still runs its course with you, whether it, you know, but when the mind comes up with all this stuff. For sure. You know, yeah. You know, I, um, and, and so then you just, it just doesn't affect you one way or the other? or you Well, it affects, yeah, it? I'm not that, no, see, it's more I'm not that which it affects. Uh, and withdrawing um, what I am out of what I'm not allows what I'm not to deal with shit better. You see? No, okay. the thoughts affect Paul, but I'm not Paul. You see? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that, therefore, that, that, now the effects don't affect Paul as much. <laughs> so, so you're just you're just like, well, I'm not really Paul, so so this has nothing to do with what I am. You don't say it anymore. It's just it's you observe that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just really strange because I've I I I know this. I've seen this. I've experienced this. But then, um, but then, lately, there's just these thoughts that that come up, and I and I guess I'm just losing my. Uh, uh, tr I'm just. All right, honey. Coming. Can I just jump in a second before I lose yeah. it? Please. So there, you just painted. In one thing, you painted the two sides, right? Yeah. You're clear, clear, and then usually you flip over the coin to butt. Butt's the flipping over the coin, then you describe that. <clears throat> they're not two different things. They're two, they're, there's, that, that's the happening of two in the context, yeah? What happens is the interest in the, the two-ness to, to, to keep that contrast going uh, migrates away from that and goes into the context. So now you don't see, see, the way most people speak is like they state something and then the other thing is like a denial or, or a rebutting or a, or relative, a, a relevant influence to diminish the first thing that was said. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Doesn't it seem that way? So there's the statement, oh, I felt great, everything was clear, and then, but, this, that, and this happens. So, yeah, so there's, it's two-sided, yes? It's duality. What non-duality is, is not two. Right. Yeah? And how that not two is apparent in the parsing and the splitting of what is into two is a loss of interest in the splitting and the parsing. Yeah? Yeah. There's a loss of interest in it. So the interest, there's a sufficient amount of interest resting in the fact of non-duality while the two-ness is appearing. Yeah? And so, the, see, the one part that you believe is an experience of non-duality is of two. That's not what non-duality is. Non-duality is not an experience. It's not a condition. It isn't. That's the parsing of two-ness. Yeah? Non-duality is a context of fact. Never rebutted or denied or proven to be incorrect by the, the court of the two-ness, so to speak. Yes? Yeah. So there's, an, it, there's a loss of interest. See... What causes the secondary part of the two-ness is the, the interest in the first part. Oh, I, that was a great experience. I want that to stabilize. I want to be chilled out, and I want to be able to feel like I feel this way. Yeah? That obviously immediately injects interest in its opposite because of duality. 
Yeah. Now, yeah. you want to remove the interest in the one side and keep it on just the, up the side of the coin you like. But every day, it's a flipping of the coin. Heads, tail, heads, tail, heads. You always want to bet on heads, but it doesn't always come up heads. Yeah? It's heads, <laughs> tail, heads, tail, heads, tail. But in the context, there isn't heads, tail. Yeah? There is what is, and there's an appearance of this and that. Yeah. Right. But the the this of the appearance of this and that isn't isn't a solid pure piece of what is. It isn't. Yeah. That's not what it is. It's not like oh the more preferred side of the coin is non-duality and then the bad side is duality. No. The coin is a coin of of duality. One of the sides of the coin of the duality has been given a term called non-duality, but non-duality is not experienced or had. It's a fact. Yeah? So this is what happens. So, like Imad was saying, this is where you'll see it and you want it to be one way and it keeps, it keeps making when the other way shows up more painful, then you this finally teaches you, oh, that was duality. I was holding non-duality in a dualistic way, yes? I wanted to feel great and this and that, and that's non-duality. And then when something happens different, that's not non-duality, yeah? Yeah. You just got an incredible lesson. None, neither of them are non-duality. Their appearance is in the context of non-duality. The, there is no... The content cannot grab the context. Yes? Right, right. I love how you put that. Um, that really hits home when you put sure. it. Uh, uh, that, that seeing uh, non-duality in a dualistic way. I mean, that's, that's so true. Well, yes. See, this is what happens. And then non-duality, again, has been framed by what keeps claiming to be the hero of it, which is a dualistic frame. And now it sets up opposing conflicts, energy. I want to feel, I want it to stabilize. I want to be chilled out. I don't want anything never to bother me. But things bother me. I'm not chilled out all the time. So th th there's like the the wishing for an affirmation and then the wishing for an affirmation produces a denial. <laughs> you, get, you get fucked immediately. So the, the loss of interest is in affirming the one and denying the other. You lose interest in that. That's what yeah. you do. And then, so instead of having a pointed interest, which is I want this and I don't want that, it blends into acceptance. Yes. It's sort of like a the it's sort of like the the subtleness of 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 that um of of you know but see it just uh, revealed you just saw it I just saw it I, so I know, it ain't so I, subtle I know. is it and and it's yeah but but when you before you see it it's it's such a subtle thing that you're seeing non duality from a dualistic well, Place. yeah, you know what I mean. Well, this is the dilemma most people are. So you got to see you're not the person that sees it that way. You yeah. can't try to make that person see it in another way, because it's a person. It's yeah. a, it's the, it's the, it's the vehicle of duality. <laughs> you're giving it a task it cannot fucking commit to. It can't achieve. Two-ness isn't going to become oneness, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. You see the futility of it. <laughs> that which is that which is dreaming of stabilization is inherently unstable. That's the fucking dilemma. <laughs> yeah. So now you saw it, and now you'll think you didn't see it in about five minutes, but you <laughs> saw it. You saw it. You did. I witnessed it. You can call me and I'll tell you. I'll remind you you saw it. Because okay. I'm not going to forget. <laughs> I'm not. So when you forget, call me up or send me a message. I'll just say, yes, you saw it. 
All right. Not you, exactly, but yes, there was a scene of it, for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Paul, thank you so much for what you do. It's so appreciated. Well, so. fantastic, honey. You bring out the best in me, because I wouldn't have gone to where we just went unless I was uh, prodded. <laughs> <laughs> so the prodding helps yeah. because you feel like you can say it in one way and then you realize you've got to really like uh like use a comb because the rope keeps looking like a snake so if you can just keep you know like moving the filaments of the rope so you can see there wasn't even a rope so how the fuck do you take it to be a snake? <laughs> so I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, let's, let's call it a day, eh? You don't want to be prodded right. anymore? What? You don't want to be prodded anymore? <laughs> I'll be prodded by Amelia quickly, so... <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it was a pleasure, everyone. Thank you. Jess, Thank you. Nice to see you, Richard. Fantastic. Judith, Mike. Much appreciated. Right yeah, my, my pleasure. Thanks for bringing me into your square. Appreciate it. Thank yes, you Donna. Oh, you're square. back again. Nice to see you. Uh -oh. I am now. I am now. See you, Christopher, everybody. Thanks so much, Alan and everyone, Sarah for having me. Thanks. Appreciate you, Thank Vlad. You. See you soon, I hope. In London, I hope, sometimes. Maybe you'll pick me up at the airport. Cut Rich right out of the whole equation. All right, see you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Bye. Bye. Okay, yeah, that was a long video. Do you guys figure what huh? you see?